I am here to represent the INET chairman, Professor Atahiru Jega, MFR, who is unavoidably absent because he went for other assignments outside the country. I to present a paper on curbing the rate of pre- and post-election violence in Nigeria, the role of electoral officers. But please permit me to say something before I present my chairman's um, paper. I must say that I'm highly elected to be here, especially with this audience, the youth. I've always loved to be with the youth in the society, even in the churches, because they are our future leaders anywhere. If I'm uh, permitted to say something on the first uh, presentation I met when I arrived, a paper presented by former speaker, Nigerian Youth Parliament, Honorable Luke Enyofon from Afaibon. Before he made his presentation, he said that everything he is going to say or he has already said is practical based on his own personal experience. I love that very much because anything about election you must do that by example. He further said that before you, the youth, join any group or follow anybody or stake your neck, you first of all look at the antecedents of the political uh, candidate. So, he also talked about many other things which is not why I'm here today. Our older states uh, man, Alahaji Buba Galajima, spoke so well but I'm not here to respond to all the things he said, but all I'm telling everybody and himself is that INEC has taken note. Now present the chairman's paper. As we approach the 2015 general elections, which is barely a year away, there is palpable excitement and anxiety given our past experiences. The convocation of this workshop by the Commonwealth Youth Council on this important topic is commendable and very timely. The thinking of the organizers of today's event when viewed within the context of our recent experience calls for collective action. I therefore salute the Nigerian youth for being in the vanguard to seek solutions to curb election violence and to, to ensure that upcoming 2015 election are peaceful. Over the years, our elections have been dogged by violence, cutting across the entire country. The violence that attended the 2011 election is still very fresh in our minds. What are the sources of this election violence? One, ignorance 
and low civic education of the electorate. Lack of internal democracy in political parties, that is, failure of political parties to respect their constitution. Intolerance of opposing views, whether within intra or inter-party affairs. The do or die attitude of politicians to politics. Pogre in politics. That is the use of thugs to achieve political victory has constituted an ugly note in elections in Nigeria. Inflammatory and the hate speeches issued by politicians. The God for that reason in politics. Unwillingness to accept election outcomes. Heavy monetization of the electoral process by politicians. Attempts to compromise election officials. If I may add, copying from what uh, Buba, the elderly statesman, said, that one of the causes of election violence is injustice. To curb the incidence of political violence, the Electoral Act. 2010, as amended, provides guidelines to govern the conduct of political parties' candidates. Section 95 of the Act says as follows. No political campaign or slogan shall be tainted with abusive language, directly or indirectly, likely to injure religious, ethnic, tribal and sectional feelings. Abusive, intemperate, slanderous, or bad language, or insinuations, or innuendos designed or likely to provoke violent reactions or emotions shall not be employed or used in political campaigns. No political party or member of a political party shall return, organize, train, or equip any person or group of persons for the purpose of enabling them to be employed for the use of display of physical force or coercion in promoting any political objectives or interests, or in such manner as to arouse reasonable apprehension that they are organized trained or equipped for that purpose. No political party, person or candidate shall keep or use private security organization, vanguard or any other group or individual by whatever name called by the purpose of providing security, assisting or aiding the political party or candidate in whatever manner during campaigns, rally, procession, or elections. Now, section 96, subsection 1, reads, no candidate, person, or group of persons shall directly or indirectly threaten any person with the use of force or violence during any political campaign in order to compel that person or any other person to support or refrain from supporting the political party or country. These are guidelines that if you follow them, like my former speaker said, there will be a level ground. However, these provisions are obeyed in the breach the law enforcement agencies have not, to some extent, been able to enforce these provisions. To ameliorate violence, the Commission has introduced transparent measures 
in order to elicit the trust and support of stakeholders. It has increased its engagement with stakeholders such as the media, civil society organizations, politicians, and political parties. Besides, except in the actual act of casting oneself elect, uh, election at the polling station, all the processes involved in an election are done transparently. The ballots are counted before they are distributed on the eve of the election day with representatives of political parties in attendance. Both cars at each of the 120,000 polling stations are announced and the result recorded and tested at each of the polling stations. Party agents in all the levels of population and ultimately the declaration of election results. The Commission has also embarked on aggressive voter education and enlightenment. It is hoped that as time goes by and with correct orientation, the incidence of violence will be reduced to the barest minimum, if not eliminated. Curbing violence is not stricter sense the responsibility of the INEC. But we must all admit that the root causes of, of election violence are nefarious, and therefore the responsibility of all well-meaning Nigerians, including the youth, in whom the politicians have found a willing tool. We do appreciate that a number of youths may be destitute, unemployed, and in some cases, unemployable. This is, however, not an excuse to foment trouble and engage in violence after collecting pittances from politicians. The Commission is determined to ensure that the votes of Nigerians count. Only credible persons who win elections are likely to deliver good governance and be responsive to their constituents. A politician who secures office using untoward or on several means is not likely to pay allegiance to or be responsive to his constituents. Now, the electoral office. From the topic given to me, who is the electoral officer? The chairman of INEC is the chief electoral commissioner, as stipulated in first schedule part one, section F of the 1999 uh, constitution, as amended. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has in its employment a crop of highly trained and dedicated officers at various levels who are engaged in delivering the mandate of INEC as the foremost election management body in Nigeria. At the local government areas, there are 774 officers known and addressed as electoral officers, short equals. The understanding of the operational duties of the electoral officers calls for equal understanding of the laws setting up INEC and its functions. The functions of INEC are clearly spelled out in the 1999 constitution as amended and also the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. The role of the electoral officer. The electoral officer is the election administrator in charge of a local government area. He is responsible for organizing free, fair, and credible elections at the local government area. 
it is the duty of the electoral officer in his local government to achieve a successful election. He engages in public and water education to create adequate awareness in the electoral process. Effective management and information at its dissemination is a vital duty of the electoral officer, which also helps to curb election violence. The electoral officer has to be accessible and available to political stakeholders at all times. He must be fair and fair in his discharge of his duties to all groups. The electoral officer has to be transparent in his engagement and strive to resolve tensions, suspicion, and speculation that would lead to election violence. He must work closely with the state institutions such as the security to identify earlier on possible sources of violence, mount preventive action, and therefore stop election violence. He must work closely with the state institutions such as the security to identify earlier possible sources of violence. Members of the political class too can help. They can do so by refraining from making pronouncements that overheat the polity and incite the youth to violence. Once the process is free and fair, politicians must learn to accept defeat gallantly and those who win must be generous in their victory. Experience has shown that political parties instigate violence to refrain from violence. At the end of the day, they are the losers and the country suffers it. Distinguished gentlemen and the chairman, while the commission will not relent in engaging with all stakeholders with a view to curbing pre- and post-election violence. Each stakeholder should play his role diligently and robustly. Curbing election violence is everyone's business. Thank you for listening.